So we're here at the Ikea Museum today and one thing that the tour guide mentioned I found fascinating was the idea that Ikea partnered long term with their suppliers. So in a sense that's good because it builds loyalty. However, from my perspective, there's also high risk involved because you're not able to adapt and change to changing environments. So one of the things would be as it, if one of the suppliers started producing at a lower quality, it would be hard for IKEA to switch away from them since they are locked into long-term contracts. It's our last night here in Copenhagen on the trip and we just got back from Ikea or Ikea as they call it here. It was a very interesting trip. We got a private tour of the museum there. So one of the things that they talked about was Ikea's brand or Ikea's brand as a whole and how it is an international company and how they've tried that their values are very important to them and it's highly emphasized and Darcy one of the fellow graduate students who works for the US IKEA she also verified that values were a really important part of their corporate culture spread across the different countries where it's located so I found it interesting that they have started a couple stores in the past few years in China and India and how those have taken off with the increase in the population of the middle class and I am actually very excited to track this company and see how it moves and how the structure changes in the future especially after what Darcy mentioned in her graduate enrichment presentation. Another thing about the design aspects of IKEA is their focus on value, simplicity, and function specifically. And that correlates with the Scandinavian culture of efficiency and how everything has a purpose. So all of the furniture and the placement of the furniture has a purpose in order to maximize its its value and how how it functions within the home.